welcome. I'd like to call this meeting to order. It's uh, the August meeting of the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Commission. And we'll start off, as always, with our prayer and Pledge of Allegiance. And Ricky Turner has agreed to lead us in that. Ricky, thank you, bud. Thank you. Let us pray. To our God and our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day and for all your many blessings. We come at you at this time to be with this council as we get ready to discuss the upcoming events that will make this community a much better place. In your son's name, amen. 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 Yeah. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thanks, Ricky. Everyone should have received their packets prior to the meeting, and contained in that packet were the minutes from our July meeting. We'll uh, entertain any changes or corrections that need to be made, and if there aren't any, a motion for acceptance. Move approval for acceptance. Second. Second. Have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. Thank you, Mitzi, as always. <clears throat> we'll move now to new business. First item under new business is an announcement of a promotion within the department. Lanny, take it away. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Uh, it's always a good day to talk about folks that have worked for you for some time and and uh, have done, has done a great job and gets a promotion. Mr. Uh, Mike Philpot is here, and uh, Michael, I went back and looked at the record, started with us part-time in 1993, and he, uh, he served as assistant athletics coordinator for several years and just got promoted to a full athletics coordinator, and uh, we're very proud to uh, announce his promotion. So, Michael, if you'd like to say something to the commission. Uh, well, just, uh, like to thank everybody. You know, I, I've been here for quite some time, like Lanny said. I remember uh, one of the first few years in athletics, uh, Eddie Taylor uh, Eddie Taylor, and Eddie Smotherman and uh, Dee, they've all been coaching in our leagues for quite some time. Uh, and, in fact, I was talking to Eddie Smotherman last night that uh, we're still looking for a coach for one of our Dolphins teams that he used to coach the Dolphins way back. So <laughs> trying to get him out of retirement, maybe. But, uh, 38 years. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, it's, it's been a job that I've really enjoyed over the years and uh, looking forward to continue on. Thank you, Michael. Congratulations, Michael. The, uh, the other is uh, we just, uh, in Michael's position, uh, when he vacated that, it became open. Uh, we had an opening for an assistant athletic coordinator, and Mr. Trevor Hutchson, who has served part-time for us for the last couple of years, uh, a graduate of Middle Tennessee State University. Uh, was selected, and Trevor, if you'd like to say something to the commission as well. Uh, good afternoon, Lanny, Angela, Rec Commission members. Uh, I would like to first off say thank you for this opportunity to be a full-time staff member for athletics, a uh, team member as well as being staff, uh, working for the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Department. Uh, I really look forward to working with everybody here in Murfreesboro and uh, look forward to having a long and successful career here with Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation. Thank right. you, Trevor. Welcome, Trevor. Congrats. <clears throat> we'll move now to item two under new business. It's a consideration of an architectural engineering services contract for the Barfield Crescent Park improvements. Lenny? Yeah, um, Mr. Chair, members of the commission, as part of our CIP program, um, in our 2012 um, bonds, we we had listed in there some improvements for Barfield Crescent, and uh, we divided it up into two sections. It was one in the five-year plan for 2013, one for 2012. What we're doing is we're looking at uh, making some improvements to the athletic area. Uh, to the concession stand, the HVAC, which is the heating, ventilating, and air conditioning, um, needs to be upgraded. Uh, so we're looking at that. We're addressing some drainage issues that we have around the ballpark. Um, and um, 
uh, some other uh, issues that we see there uh, at the complex. And then also we're looking to upgrade the sewer line from the Wilderness Station uh, because most of the areas at Barfield Crescent Park did not perk, so to speak. It did not have what we would call gravity sewer service. We had to put in uh, grinder pumps. Uh, and then you may not be familiar with those, but uh, those are um, alternatives to uh, having a septic tank or a gravity flow system where it goes into a collection and then it is uh, put under pressure and pumped to a uh, an area where you can use a gravity pump system or gravity system. Uh, that one has failed on us over the past 13 years. I can't tell you how many times, um, but um, it always fails at the wrong time. We always have a group rental or we have summer camp going on or something. So uh, we've asked that uh, that be upgraded and looked at. And in addition to that, uh, there was some money in our capital improvements program for putting canopies, shade canopies, over our bleachers. So uh, we're going to make that a part of it as well. One of the other areas that we were looking at was repaving the trail from the Wilderness Station to the backcountry camping. Um, Weiser and Company, uh, I've asked them to, uh, to look at that, to, to look at all of these different items, and they came up with a, a price um, for the design. <clears throat> And one of the things that we found is we do not have enough money to do all of those. So um, uh, we're leaving the backcountry trail off at this time. And we're looking at alternatives. We know that there may be some grant opportunities for us in the future. Um, we know that uh, there may be some opportunities to get funds from other sources. And they're exploring those for us. So. Um, in the matter of time, just so that we can get our athletic facilities designed and get the work done in the limited time that we have between seasons so that we can be hopefully ready for the 2014 season, we felt like we needed to move on with that portion in the Wilderness Station uh, sewer. So um, I am asking for today the approval of Weiser and Company for professional services to prepare the plans and specifications and provide construction administration for the Barfield improvements for a lump sum not to exceed $42,642. And we estimate that the cost of these improvements will run somewhere around $342,815. And we'll be bringing something back to you on the trail as soon as we find out a little more information on that one. But that's the first recommendation. All right. Any questions of Lanny regarding this project? Tim? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. In the capital improvement plan, you got 451000 approved for these types of improvements. Is that I've got 200 right. for Barfield under 2012. I had 259,225 dollars, mm -hmm. and then for the canopies all the way through the department, uh, because we'll have some canopies at McKnight uh, and Starplex as well. Uh, there was a total of 500,000 put in for that. Uh, the canopies for uh, this portion, I think, ran 192,000. Okay. Yes, 192. So you would take the 259, 225 plus the 192, and uh, that would be the funds that would be available. And we're not going to expend all of those. They'll be part of it goes back to the trail. And you're thinking 342 will complete these improvements? We think 342, based on the engineer's estimate, yeah. that we'll be able to complete these. Lanny, tell me, tell us, tell me why we need to pay. Backcountry trails? Well, this one especially is because it makes it ADA accessible. Okay. Um, uh, the, we're required by law under uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act, anytime we build a facility, 
to have equal access for people with disabilities. So uh, the paved trail uh, is our accessible trail to the campground and, and to other areas. If you look at the disc golf course, half of it, and basically it says that at least 50% of what you're offering needs to be accessible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good questions. Good. Any other questions? There are none. We need a motion for approval. Move for approval. Seven. Seven. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, um, I'll be getting with Wiser. There's two representatives here today from Wiser. You can raise your hand. Um, they've been working with me. Uh, it, the way we do those um, cost estimates now, it, it, it makes it more difficult. They have to do a lot of work on the front end. Uh, in anticipation that hopefully they'll get uh, the contract, but they've been working uh, now. Gosh, we've been we've been talking for over three months, uh, trying to get cost estimates, trying to look at the scope of work, trying to keep it within where we know that we need to be, et cetera. So they've done a considerable amount of work on the front end just to get us to where we are today. So I want to tell them how much I appreciate that. I'm sure they're going back to put a contract together. So <clears throat> Mr. Tucker and others will be reviewing that. We'll be bringing that on to council as soon as that's ready. Thanks, Lanny. Okay. Next item under new business is, again, a consideration for architectural and engineering services, and this time for improvements at McKnight Park and Starplex. Um, again, this is in our uh, 2012 um, CIP, and um, uh, we've got some money both for improvements at uh, McKnight Park and for Starplex. Um, one of the things that uh, I know that all of you are aware of is the commercial development that's going on now around McKnight Park. Uh, we're going to have a new Walmart. There's a lot of uh, residential land now that's looking to turn commercial. Um, and, and there's some other opportunities across the way or across the road, the Haynes property, that uh, is going to be developed. And w one of the uh, uh, items that I'm talking to um, a consultant right now, and I'll be bringing that to you in the near future, is how does McKnight Park fit into those developments? How does it work in terms of the new traffic lights, new traffic flow, um, and so forth? And so th there's going to be some improvements that we'll probably need to make, make or some modifications to the park itself. So instead of bringing you the improvements to the parks, I know that the ball fields, um, again, are on a tight schedule. So what we're doing is we're considering the improvements to the ball field areas, the areas inside the fences first. We know we can go ahead and do those and then bring back to you what we feel like we need to do to the park. So at the four field complex, uh, we need to redo the HVAC system. Uh, that's been failing for several years. As a matter of fact, we had to put a portable unit in it this year just to get us by. So that's what we'll be doing at the Fourfield Complex. At Starplex, it was built in 1996. Um, we've got leaks. Uh, we've got windows that over time have rotted and we've had to take them out. Uh, we've got a lift that makes it handicap accessible, um, which we need to redo. Uh, there, there's a lot of work. We've got settling sidewalks. Uh, the bleachers do not meet uh, current standards, so we need to replace those. There, there's a lot of work that we need to do at Starplex uh, to, to get it back to where it needs to be. So the recommendation that I have here is for the renovation of Starplex, and you can see the items that I have listed, uh, and then the uh, improvements to the Fourfield Complex. 
Uh, I've been working with SEC Incorporated. Um, they have given us a fee of $83,503 for architectural engineering services to um, essentially um, design and oversee the construction of $974,576 of work in those two complexes. Uh, you can see the amount of money that I had put in the capital improvements program for um, McKnight Park, and then uh, the amount that I had for Starplex, and also the amount that I had budgeted for the canopies. So we're again, we're not spending all of that because what I'm doing is I'm trying to see what we need to do in the park. Uh, so we'll bring it back with a balance of what we need to do in the park, uh, hopefully for a future recommendation. Okay. And I'll be glad to answer any questions you may have. Any questions of Lanny regarding this project? Lanny, I think these are very much like the uh, uh, the last uh, Barfield Crescent improvements we were talking about. It uh, It's one of those things, if we're going to have these parks, we certainly have to maintain them and upkeep them. And, and sometimes that may seem to be quite expensive, uh, which which it is expensive to maintain and upkeep these parks. But uh, but certainly it's something that that we almost have to do. And uh, and certainly when the uh, ADA accessibility issues are concerned, it's 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 something that we're mandated to do. And uh, although some of these prices do look they look like a lot of money when you look at them because, I mean, I look at them and see tax dollars, but I also understand the importance of, of what you're doing and what you're trying to accomplish here and and certainly trying to strike a balance with what's going on in that community as far as North Murfreesboro and Memorial Boulevard out there. Uh, it's it's quite a balancing act that you're trying to do, yes. and I appreciate the effort that you're trying to make, and, um, and, and certainly I know your intentions are good. Uh, and having said that, I, I would... Uh, Make the motion that we accept the improvements to the McKnight Park and Star Place. Thanks, Eddie. Is there a second? Second, and I got a question. Absolutely. Uh, these uh, these parks are going to be heavily used during spring clean as well with TWSAA, correct? Yes. And uh, and I think the Star Plex County Schools are using that park. Right. The central magnet uh, uses the uh, field number five and then also uses field number one uh, at the four field complex Did for the financial athletics. assistance from Pardon? Do we get any financial assistance from the county on that or we have that? not yet. Now they have done some improvements to the park. They put up a new concession stand uh, sorry, a, a new school board. Uh, if you go out, you'll see the windscreens on the fencing, uh, and they're willing to do some additional fundraising. I know they're talking about maybe in the future, if that becomes a permanent home, um, talking to us about a field house, uh, which could double as restroom facilities at in the park area itself where we do some special events. Uh, but that's in the future. But they are willing, I think, to at uh, – to make some uh, financial commitments. What would be the timetable on these improvements being made? Would they be made well in advance of spring? That's that's our hope, that we can get in there and do that. Now, uh, what we'll do is we'll get in and make the ones that will affect play first and try to get those completed. And then the others where we can work um, and not affect play uh, will be secondary to those. Okay, thank you. Well, one of the improvements I may mention in Starplex, when we built Starplex in 96, uh, of course the, the town was a lot smaller, um, and the demand was not as great, and we didn't have Barfield. We didn't have the Barfield Park at that point because we didn't open it until 2000. Um, and the seasons were shorter. So the the restrooms had to be winterized just like any other restroom that had no heat in it. Mm -hmm. uh, now the seasons are longer. We actually start right at the end of January. Well, from January 
to right around the 1st of March, and we really kind of take a chance. We put portables out there. So the opening and everything is with portable. So part of the improvements that we'll do is to reroute water lines so that we can, through the HVAC and the way we'll do this, that we can have that facility and, and we will not have to winterize it. It'll be warm pretty much year round and that will lengthen the season and, you know, give the bathrooms to the folks. So. Mm -hmm. It, it's it's those kind of things that we're looking at in this improvement. So it, not only has the usage of the facility changed, but the the way that we need to, I guess, operate and, and, and look at our renovations dictate what we need to do as well. And, Lanny, I know I pointed out the cost of these projects, but I tell you what, these things are huge economic impacts to our community Absolutely. when we bring spring fling in some of the other events so so that they are a counterbalancing act on both sides of uh, the expense but also the revenue that's generated not only just by parks and recreation by the lease of the fields but by the community and the people who come in and uh, use our hotels and restaurants and and shop at our local businesses as well so there is a uh, a tremendous economic impact on the that's a plus on the other side so yeah. and i've i've had numerous complaints of, from folks that have been out accessing either the tennis courts or some of these other ballparks early in the spring when they've had to have portable toilets out there and they don't like it one bit. So. <laughs> well, everybody loves a good portable, don't they? I mean, <laughs> doesn't get any better. Yeah. So anything we can do in that area would be. All right. Well, we have a uh, we have a motion and a second. That was some good discussion. Is there any more questions or discussions before we vote? All in favor, say aye. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Thank Lanny. You. Next is uh, consideration of new program and associated fees. And uh, Rachel, you are up. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm seeking your approval for a new program and the fees associated with it. I'm proposing a wild Valentine's <coughs> Day program. Uh, which this year will be on Friday, and as an added bonus, it's a full moon. So what I'm proposing is that um, we start out the evening with a guided full moon hike, and then the participants would come back to the wilderness station and have fondue desserts, coffee, and other drinks while listening to um, a local musician for the rest of the evening. So the fees associated um, would be $10 for the first two, and then $3 for an additional um, person or people in that party. And um, that way couples can come out and enjoy the evening or families and it makes it affordable. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Thanks, Rachel. Any questions for Rachel regarding this program? Rachel, what's your maximum amount? Do you have a maximum number that you? Our room holds 75. Okay. So that would be a really large guided hike. Uh -huh. but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I bet you fill up quick, too. I hope we do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, if, uh, what kind of cost are you going to have as far as, like, enter this entertainment? Um, if, 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 for, if, for example, the weather doesn't, doesn't permit, you know, because right. of either rain and obviously that. We're looking into a, full moon, so. a solo act. Um, uh, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't understand the the question the, just kind of looking at what happens do you have any upfront cost upfront right okay um, the musicians that we're looking at are around the hundred dollar range um, so we're looking for a solo act to come in so usually they'll play for that let, let me jump in to, to let you know also our legal department is um, very supportive in our performance agreements and and clarifying what happens in the event of cancellation and they uh, they help us out very well on on making sure that those questions are a are answered before they're asked. Thanks. Any other questions? Are none. We need a motion for acceptance of the program as presented. Mr. Chairman, I'll make that motion. Thanks, Eddie. And second. second. We have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. <coughs> Mr. Carey. Rachel, thanks. thanks for being here. Thanks. Sounds like a great program. Next item is a uh, discussion of the Greenway Art Festival. Melinda Tate's here to give us a full update. Melinda, welcome. Thanks. Hello. Good afternoon. 
see if that works. I'm, I'm here today to talk about one of my favorite events uh, with Parks and Rec, the Greenway Art Festival. And this year it will be held September 21st at Old Fort Park along the trail and in the pavilions. Last year we had about 75 different booths and it was a gorgeous day. It was a very pleasant afternoon. Um, we are now accepting applications for artists and we're looking for painters and sculptors and jewelers and um, anyone who doesn't create things from a mold or a pattern. We're, we're looking for original art and anyone who is interested can contact me at the Greenway office at 893-2141 for an application, or it can be found online on the city's website uh, under the Parks and Rec section and the Greenway section after that. And um, I know we've had a lot of variety. We've had uh, um, some metalworking, and uh, the, the artist that designed our poster this year, it's kind of whimsical. It's a little uh, departure from what we've had in the past, uh, but it's, uh, it's a good family event, and we welcome not only participants to come out and do some early holiday shopping, but we also encourage any artists in town that might be interested. Um, this is a good first show. We also have artists who are coming back. They've come back every year for the last seven years. So I um, hope to see you all, all out there. Or if you do artwork, I hope to see an application. Thank you. Oh, does anyone have any questions? Anybody have any questions of Melinda? Great work. Thanks for the Thank update. You. Last, but certainly not least, Becky Johnson, our marketing coordinator, is going to give us some update on upcoming events. Becky, welcome. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Some of our upcoming events, the first one I have to talk about is our Back to School Bash. And we would like everybody to come on out to Cannonsburg Village and join Murfreesboro City Schools for their annual Back to School Bash. They'll be fun for the entire family. There will be music, games, giveaways, and much more, and it will be Saturday, August 17th from 10 to 1 p.m., and it's free at Cannonsburg Village. So we hope to see everybody out there, especially I think by next week just about everybody should be back to school locally. Our next program, uh, Labor Day is around the corner. We have our Labor Day pool party, and uh, that's at Borough Beach out at Sportscom Outdoor Pool, and they'll have water, of course, music, games, and there'll be food, fun, and prizes for everyone. And that is Labor Day, which is Monday, September 2nd, from 10 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. And that does have a um, premium admission charge, which is $4 for adults, 3 for youth and seniors, at the Sportscom Outdoor Pool. Then we have uh, the Hummingbird Festival, which Rachel, who was up here earlier, this is one of her programs. That is at Barfield Crescent Park, where it is home to hundreds of hummingbirds. So come and join us in celebrating these creatures. There will be guest speakers, children's activities, hummingbird merchandise, which I'm curious to check out, and much more. And that's for all ages on Saturday, September 7th from 3 to 5 p.m., and it's free at the Wilderness Station. Then we have, back by popular demand, the Puppy Plunge. That is where you bring your pup, your dog, to enjoy a dip in the outdoor pool at Sportscom. And they do this at the end of the season. These are the last uh, beings that will be in the water for the season before they close it down for the winter. They won't have humans swimming in it the next day. Um, they do ask that all dogs that come for the Puppy Plunge be current on their vaccinations. Humans will not be allowed in the water, just the dogs, but uh, we want the humans near them to corral their dogs when they get out. These dogs have a, a, a fun time. It's kind of neat to see them running around, and it is for puppies to seniors on Saturday, September 14th from 10 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. at Borough Beach, the Sportscom Outdoor Pool, and it is $1 per dog to participate. Then we have space available in the MRFs Fun Run which is held in conjunction with the Murfreesboro Half Marathon, which I'm sure most people are well aware of, is sold out. But if your child would like to participate in the Murph's Fun Run, it's a one-mile course for kids. They'll finish on the MTSU track. 
They'll receive a finisher's medal and a T-shirt. There'll be refreshments for them. And there, there will also be some spirit awards for those who show enthusiasm for the event. And that is for ages 6 through 13 on Saturday, October 12th. And it starts at 7.15 a.m., which means it starts immediately after all the half marathoners take off and start the half marathon. They'll then have the one-mile fun run. Um, it is $15 to register, and you register at themiddlehalf.com, and it's at the MTSU Dean Hayes Track and Soccer Stadium. And as always, for more information on all of our programs and events, in addition to the ones that I just mentioned, you can call our main office at 890-5333. You can go to murfreesborotn.gov slash parks for our website. You can download the REC connection, and you can check us out on Facebook as well. Any questions? All right. Any questions for Becky? Lots of stuff as usual. <laughs> just just want to reemphasize the... Uh, the joint program between parks and schools. Yes. At Cannons Park, uh, and Dr. Gilbert may want to speak to that we'll a little be there. bit. But <laughs> we're preparing. Uh, we're counting on it. We're, but, we're getting school ready, but we're preparing for that too. <laughs> but the, there'll be school supplies, a lot of other things that uh, children will need for the school year, and those will be free and available during that day as long as supplies last. Right. So, uh, lots of informational booths. Lots of information too. As well. What types of uh, back, what type of supplies are y'all are y'all planning to give away? Um, I would have to get with outreach, but I would imagine we're looking at backpacks, probably paper, pencil, those kinds of things. Our church yeah. just our church just did one, right? And we actually had a lot of items left over, so I, I think I'll that would be try great. to get someone in touch. Do they need to get in touch? with Parks and Rec, or they need to get in touch with six schools. Back. It would be better, I think, Greg yeah. Lyle, maybe. Mm -hmm. okay. Greg uh, or, or Candy, either one. Yeah. Tim. Lisa will know where to <laughs> take care of that. But <laughs> if if, if uh, folks are listening and do have, uh, just like uh, Mr. Tips is talking about school supplies um, that they would like to donate to this. Right. Uh, then we would be more than glad to have them. You can call the Parks and Rec Department, 890-5333, or the Murfreesboro City Schools. I think that's 893-2313. Very good. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, ask for uh, Greg Lyles or, or either ask for me, and we'll make sure that those school supplies get to the source. And, and that's a big day. There's a lot of children uh, that come out and there's a lot of families that need those supplies so uh, it's it's a great effort a great uh, event thank you thanks Lanny uh -huh. Becky while we've got you up there I, I just want to thank you and Michael and Trevor and Thomas and all you guys who were out at Sportscom last night mm -hmm. uh, we had the national night out last night and and I know many of us up here on the uh, board uh, commission uh, did the tour last night and I just want to say a special thank you to all the volunteers and people who were involved at Oakland's Park, Rogers Park, Patterson Park, Spring Valley, and Sportscom, because you do a tremendous job. And, and I know the community was was very receptive to it, and and were very involved. And uh, I just it was such a first class class act that. Uh, um, it, it makes us proud when we go out and we see the events taking place and so much involvement and so many kids involved having fun. Um, it, uh, we're, we're, we're blessed to live in a city that has such a great parks and rec department and law enforcement as well uh, to be involved. And uh, So thank you to you all. Uh, the athletic staff did a great job, I have to say, at Sportscom. I went to take pictures, and those kids were having such a good time dancing and winning prizes. and. <laughs> They really did. So the athletic staff at Sportscom did an awesome job. Thanks. Thanks, Lily. Any other questions, comments, or business to come before the commission? Being none? I move adjourn. We, we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Don't need one. <laughs> <laughs> We're adjourned. Uh -huh.